Okay, so we're here at one of my very oldest friend, Brittany. She just, they built this beautiful home on a lot of land. This is like all their land. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go check it out, have the kids play, I think make some lunch. It's gonna be so fun. Isn't it fun to just get together with old friends? And actually, like, we need to see each other more. It's one of those things where every time we get together, we're like, why don't we do this more? But it's crazy. Life just gets crazy, you know? He loves things. Hi, Brittany. How are Smells you? Smells new. Hi. Wow. Big. Cute. Swim, I know. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh. Like, I cannot get a picture of her. Um, hi. Can you be out there? Oh, sorry. Just like me. How's she doing? She's so fun. She's a good girl. Hey, Scotland. She left last night, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How old is she? Two months? Yeah, she'll be two months on Sunday. Okay, guys. So, we're here hanging out. And we are just talking about <laughs> some baby stuff because Brittany just had a baby two months ago. And yeah, so we're just right in the middle of all this baby. motherhood, young young moms, we're still learning, but we, you know, we've got a couple years of mommyhood behind us, so yeah. Anyway, so we were just talking to Emily because, I'm um, sorry if this, they're, they're new at being in front of the camera, but I know, so I, know really hard. Hard. <laughs> I know you guys will be so great. <laughs> She's like, you we're better not, be so great. We're not you guys will be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these two, they're my, like some of my best friends from high school and, and junior high. So anyway, we've been together a long, a long time, time and just new things together. So we were just talking to Emily because um, she p suffered from some postpartum depression after her first baby, yeah. right? So we were just talking about it and I wanted to put it on the vlog because I know a lot of girls out there suffer from it and you maybe don't even know you suffer from it. So anyway, we're just going to kind of chat about it and you guys can listen in. So we were just asking you... When did it, when did you like start, do you think you started looking back? When did you start feeling the depression? When I started feeling it? Yeah. So Ben was born at like almost noon and by 10 o'clock that night, I was feeling really bad and I like couldn't stop crying and I was just feeling just bad. Like, like I had a, like I had a cloud over uh -huh. my head. And I remember the next day, so he was born on Saturday. The next day was a Sunday and my mom uh -huh. came to the hospital again to visit me. And I had been trying, you know, other than Brig had been trying to like hide okay. it and just act happy because I had just had a baby. Like things are happy. Life is yeah. good. He's healthy. I'm healthy. Like everything was great. Yeah. But I remember asking my mom if she ever just felt sad after she had a baby. Yeah. This was when you were like still in the hospital? Yeah, we were still in the hospital. And yeah, so I was just very like, just weepy. And uh -huh. I just, the anxiety just made me feel like I had a pit in my stomach. Like I was just constantly like, uh -huh. feeling like I was gonna throw up or just, yeah. yeah, it was just bad, it was just bad. And I'm not normally like that. And so I knew yeah, so that was something different. wasn't quite right. So did you like know when you were at the hospital, but you just didn't feel like it was bad enough, like I'm gonna tell someone, I'm gonna act on it with my doctors or like how long yeah. did it take you to do something about it? Yeah. So. They, um, the hospital I was at makes you take a questionnaire before you leave the hospital yeah. about postpartum depression. And I remember answering that as truthfully as I felt like I should, but also I didn't want to be like, I know I have postpartum depression because it's normal to feel overwhelmed or to even feel a little bit sad, like they call it the baby blues. Oh, and that's yeah. normal for uh -huh. apparently up to like two weeks. Uh -huh. It's normal to feel that way, and so I didn't want to be like, this is the worst I've ever, you know, felt or whatever, even though oh, it yeah. was, but I didn't know if that was normal, and so I didn't, you know, if it was like one to five, how bad do you feel? I wanted to be like, I feel awful, like five, I feel terrible, but it was like, oh, three, you know, so anyways, that's what I did, and then, should I stop talking or should I keep going? So, we got home, and it just, yes, sweetheart, what does she need help with? Okay. Pause. Change? Pause. Mom. Okay, where were we? We were at. So like, so like, what point? I don't know. At what point was it like the turn, the turning point? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So at what point was what was the breaking point where you were like, I need help? So we came home. It was Briggs' first year of medical school. So, so that made it better. Probably. So like, <laughs> yeah. that's fun. He just. Like couldn't take much time off. Like, yeah, they wanted him to be back like two days later, That's and I was so like, hard. I need you. 
Um, so anyways, I was still just not like doing well. And I knew it was kind of weird because I, I like wouldn't want to be with Ben, but then my baby, but then if somebody else would hold Ben, I just was like, I need him. Like it was really weird. It was really weird. I was all kinds of whacked out. Anyways, um, so Brig had me trying like breathing stuff or like when I, when I started to feel like the panic was coming and it would, it would come the worst when the sun was going down. Like when night was coming, I would start to like get really panicky. And so my breathing would get faster, my heart rate would rise and I would like just cry for no reason. Anyways, I, there was one morning, there was one morning where Brig had to go to school and I was just feeling completely overwhelmed and I had, I had like my anxiety attack and I didn't know, you know, what I was gonna do being alone all day. Anyways, that was the day that I realized, like I'm not okay, I'm not okay to be by myself with my baby. Like I can't, I can't regulate my emotions or my control of my emotions and I knew that that was when I needed to reach out and do something. And they say baby blues can last up to two weeks and I, that was, Hey, you are okay. <laughs> that was that was day 11. So I was still within like the time frame of having baby blues. Yeah. But it was I knew it was way more than that. And I think it's just intuition. I knew, I mean, I've had you know, I've had sad times in my life yeah. that have made me I don't think I would ever consider have considered myself like clinically depressed, but I've definitely had like a hard few months or a hard year or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or really hard days. But I always knew that I would come out of it. Like if I was underwater, I knew that I would come back up. And this was a completely different feeling. Like this was, I cannot get my head above. Like no matter what I do, no matter what I try on my own, I knew that I couldn't do it. And that was something I never felt before. And that's how I knew that I needed to call my doctor. So I called, um, called my doctor. They had, they asked me a couple questions on the phone. Things like, are you having thoughts of you know harming yourself or harming your baby? Are you like, are you crying with no explanation? Just stuff like that. So they had me answer a few questions over the phone and prescribed me right there. They prescribed me fluoxetine, which is the generic Prozac, which is just an antidepressant. And so I got that. Um, and they and when they told me it could take two to six weeks to kick in, I cried even more because <laughs> I just thought I can't live like this for two for two more, or six more weeks. Like I just thought. Something has to happen to help me. Yeah. Anyway, so two weeks to the day that I was taking my Prozac, it was like, I'm back. Like, you felt back I was back that. in my body. Yeah. That other horrible person wasn't here anymore, and I felt back to myself. It was like miraculous. It was praise That's awesome. pharmacies. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I, and I know not everybody likes that option, um, but for me, that's what. And it was a very small dose. It was a 10 milligram dose. It was really small and it, it did what I needed it to do. And it brought me back to where I could find joy in being a mom and being a wife and being alive. <laughs> so, yeah. Did your did you like your mom help you out a lot those after you like realized like I need I can't just on my own? Did you just Yeah, yeah. My mom I'm really blessed to live close to family. So my mom and my sister would come over and actually my sister not your mom. was the best <laughs> resource for me when I was feeling bad because she has struggled her whole life with some mental health problems and anxiety and depression are among them and so she just helped me know like you're feeling this way and these feelings are real and they're affecting you for real but they're not you and this isn't this isn't your forever this is, you don't have to feel like this forever and you're gonna get through it like you'll you'll get out on the other side and um, that was really helpful to have somebody who has been through it and dealt with it and has learned to cope so well. Yeah, totally. It was really helpful to have her. So I remember coming to visit you like shortly after yeah. Ben was born. Yeah, like and within a couple days. I think it was a couple, yeah, he was a couple days old. And um, I remember he had a, a happy face balloon. Was that from your dad? That, yeah, that was from my dad. And um, it was a big happy face balloon on the back. It said like, no 5 p.m. blues or something. Is that what it said? Yeah. Um, but I remember I thought that was so cute that yeah, he knew he brought you like a cute little happy face. Yeah. But I remember you were talking to me and you were just sad. You were like, yeah. just Brittany and I sad. went in the kitchen away from everybody else. 
And I was just telling her that I just didn't feel good and I was just sad. And I probably I wish, started crying because that's what I did. You did, but I wish that I, I had no idea then. I didn't have babies or anything like that, so I, I didn't realize anything. But I mean, yeah. looking back, I knew that that wasn't you, you know, so I yeah. wish I had known more about it. Yeah. But it's a weird thing. It's one of those like weird cycles, like a terrible cycle where yeah. it's very personal, you want to totally. hide it, mm -hmm. but in order to get help, you just can't, can't. but totally. that's what it tells you to do. It's telling yeah. you, yeah. hide your feelings, you're, you know, so true. you're in this like darkness. So true. And that you're all alone, you yeah. know, and that nobody can help you. Nobody knows what's happening to you. <laughs> it's just not true. And so, yeah, that's and I would like never it. wish it you on know. anybody. And I, the thing that breaks my heart is that people go through this and they don't have those things. You know, they don't have a family that cares about them. Or even worse, they have a family that thinks it's fake or that, totally. or just writes it off as, you know, your emotional, your hormones are out of whack because you just had a baby. It's like, yeah. yes, but it's real to me. These feelings are real and they are happening to me. And so you need the love and support. So anybody out there who feels like they're feeling that way, but that they, they maybe aren't supported the way they need to be. There is a community out here. And we're pulling for you and we want you to get the help that you need, whatever that might be. You know, the things that Brig, that my husband and I are doing, like the breathing exercises and the meditation and playing the piano was really therapeutic for me. So that was one of my steps was go play some hymns on the piano. And those things can work for some people. And so, you know, there's lots of different resources, lots of different avenues of treatment you can do. Um, the one that worked for me was medication, but other things, you know, therapy or things like that can work too. So yeah. anyways, just people who feel like they're alone in this, just know that you're not. And there are people who've gone through it and have come out and feel a lot of love and compassion for you. Yeah. That's so awesome, and, and I didn't ever really suffer with anything like this, and so it's really hard for me to understand it, but I have a lot of people close to me who have, and so it's definitely just a real thing. Like you, I love how you said that it's like, it may not be the real you, but they are still real feelings, and this is your real life. Yeah. And so if, if you feel like you need any kind of help, that's what your doctor is there for, to, to help you decide, like, is this a lingering thing that needs help, or is, is it going to pass? Is it going to resolve itself? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, thank you so much. I just awesome. love you. Yay. Tara's a rock star. <laughs> so um, thank you guys for watching. I know that a lot of people suffer from this, and if you do or if you have experience, please comment below, and we can kind of just have a little community right here of girls who have suffered through this. Um, it's crazy around here. Thanks for sticking with us. We've had <laughs> kids I all over the place. Oh my gosh! You anyway, um, that's it for today. We'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Mom. What? <laughs> so we're gonna add the oil. You wanna dump that in, Porter? Yeah. Very good. Then pour in the water. This is gonna be hot, so mom's gonna do this one, okay? 